everybody welcome back to the vlog i know it has been a hot minute since i've posted a vlog um i think it's been a couple of weeks at least yeah it's been since before christmas since since i've been vlogging so i'm very glad to be back i find that when i don't have a vlog going there's so many things that just i don't know that i think of or that happen throughout my days or whatever that i want to share with you and then I'm, I get disappointed when I'm not currently vlogging and I'm like, shoot, I have to update them on this. So yeah, there's probably gonna be um, a bunch of just random little updates of what's been going on with me the past couple of weeks. Um, so yeah, I thought we would just do kind of a little catch up vlog. We're just gonna hang out over the next couple of days and I hope that that sounds good to you. This is the first video that I'm filming with my new microphone also. So I hope that the sound is going to be okay. Um, also, side note, this is my third time trying to start this vlog. The first time was like a week ago. I made the intro and then I just never, I just didn't continue it. I didn't pick up the camera again. Um, so I just scrapped that. And then I also attempted two days ago to start the vlog. And I'm so mad about this because the clip like looked so nice. It was a sunny day. Um, the vibes were vibing. And then after literally talking to y'all for 20 minutes, although I will say it was a bit of a rant, so maybe this happened for a reason, but after talking for over 20 minutes, I realized that there was no audio. There was no audio. So <laughs> that clip was just entirely unusable. So here we are, take three. It is Monday afternoon. I just finished my lunch, so I figured I would just pop on here, do the intro again, and um, get a vlog going because yeah, I miss y'all. And I love vlogging. There's always just, yeah, random, like I said, random moments that I wanna share with you guys. Um, I had a really rough Christmas break. I was going to divulge the whole story of what i've been dealing with lately but i kind of decided against it so in the last weekly vlog i was talking about how i wanted to take some time over the christmas break to just like relax and recharge and it ended up just being very stressful and anxiety filled and insomnia filled and i i don't think i'm really gonna go into everything that was going on here but just know that i'm fine everything's fine it was nothing to do with like anybody like my there was just stuff going down outside of our control and I honestly just want to move forward and try to push that out of my brain. But I will say that the break ended up just sucking. Christmas itself was wonderful. Um, we had such a lovely, cozy little first Christmas in our home. We spent the morning together with the dogs, um, doing our gift exchange and just enjoying each other's company. And then we went to my mom's and had a nice little family day. So yeah, it was just, it was a lovely day and I'm so, so grateful. And um, the last video that I posted before this was a big book haul because I was absolutely spoiled for Christmas. I got so many books. Um, so yeah, that, it was just, it was really lovely Christmas. So that's really great. Let's focus on the positive. Um, another positive thing is that I've been excited to tell y'all is that I am back running finally. I think I'm five runs in now and I was so excited to update you because I know I've said in one of the past vlogs that my goal was to start running by the end of 2023 and I did it. I am running again. Um, although the weather is calling for snow this week, so that kind of sucks if it's gonna snow because obviously it's not ideal to be running in, but we'll see what happens. Right now I'm focusing a lot on just trying to get organized and like plan my life out and just have better time management, which is just like honestly like an ongoing goal for me that I'm always just trying to improve on. But also I've just realized how important it is for me to just have like my nice relaxation time where I'm reading a book or, you know, I just have been learning how to crochet. Um, I also got gifted a couple of little cozy activities to do for Christmas as well. So I got a paint by numbers, which I'm so excited for. And then I also got a puzzle because I've been wanting to try to do a puzzle. It just sounds so relaxing. Um, and I don't think I've done a puzzle since I was like a child. So I guess those are just examples of things that I am going to be trying to intentionally put aside time to do for me to just like be and relax and just like get lost in working on something. Um, so I'm thinking that maybe we'll do one of those things together in this vlog, either today or tomorrow, maybe later today. We'll see. It's a gloomy, rainy day out today. Um, oh my goodness. Yeah, it's like, you're not gonna be able to see, I don't think, but the whole window is just rainy. It's just wet. 
Speaking of cozy little hobbies, thank you so much to everyone who left a kind comment about the name change for the channel. I am so glad that y'all liked it. Some people were bummed out uh, about me changing it from Fern and Olive and I'm sorry, but yeah, I just, I don't know. Fern and Olive was just kind of like, I love that, but it just kind of felt like a placeholder. It was just that, like, I couldn't really think of anything else to put. I feel like this name is gonna really like encompass a lot of the things and like, just like the vibe of this channel. So, um, yeah. Anyways, I do have a lot to do today. Um, it is Monday, so I need to put in a few more hours of work um, before I can kind of do anything else. So I'm gonna get that out of the way. And then I have to get groceries, but I don't know. I'm kind of tempted to just put that off because I really want to just, I don't know, crack into that paint by numbers or something. So we'll see what I end up doing later. One of those two things. Hopefully it's the more fun thing of the two. These are my girls. These are my girls. Very brave going for a walkie in the rain. It is pouring out. <laughs> I'm gonna have to change Olive out of her rain jacket into her sweater because look what the weather has turned into. <laughs> We've only been driving for a few minutes, like five minutes away, and it's a freaking winter wonderland out here. Oh my gosh. Come here. <laughs> Look at you. Yes, the first snow. <laughs> what do you smell? Yeah. What do you smell, girl? Come on. Good girl. Cadence, what do you think, baby? You like the snow? <laughs> I just had a shower and put my rose hip oil on my face. I'm also wearing my pajamas right now under this sweater. So I'm all cozy and ready to relax. And it's actually snowing tonight. Well, it's more like slushing right now, but Today is the first snowfall here, as y'all saw. It's so crazy because it's mostly rainy at my house, but then when we drive just a little bit away, it's like completely snowy. Um, but we, I did look outside and there is some snow on the ground. So it's happening, it's happening. I feel like it really adds to the relaxing ambiance that I'm trying to have tonight though. So it works for me. I also put a little crackling fire snowy ambiance thing on the TV as well. So it feels very cozy in here. I am just gonna set up to try out this paint by number. Look how cute it is. It's like a little planty room. It says um, degree of difficulty easy. So good because I haven't done one of these since I was a kid, but I'm excited. Um, so I've got that. Oh, I should make my tea. I should make my tea. Um, I will do that, but got candles going. I'm also excited because one of my favorite channels to watch um, posted a new video. One of my favorite, like particularly cozy slash like relaxing channels that I love watching is Kat. I think her channel is called Katherine Karras. Yeah, um, so I'm obsessed with everything she posts. I'll post her channel in the description, but she posts a lot of just cozy, like this one is journaling, writing, crocheting, first reads of the year. So yeah, she just does, like her content is on point and it always is so, so relaxing. So I'm really excited to watch this video and I can just watch this video easily on my phone while I'm doing this, thanks to today's sponsor, Casetify. If you've been watching my channel for a while, then you've probably heard me talk about this case before. It is one of my recent obsessions because it has this ring stand here. So this little logo bit just pulls out and it becomes a kickstand. I like this so much more than any other methods that I've tried of propping my phone up because of just how understated it is. Like I don't need to add anything else to my case. This just pops out and then, and it goes either way too. Like you can prop your phone either way. I've even used it like this before as well. Anyways, it's just so, so handy. And this is my favorite case from Case Defy. 
Not to mention it's so cute because they have so many patterns and prints available that you can pick out for your case. There's different customizations you can make. They partner with tons of different artists all over the world. So yes, cute and functional. I actually just dropped my phone today when we were out on our WALK. I dropped it in the rocks and then I literally stepped on it, you guys. And it's completely fine because it's wearing a case to fight case. I literally drop this thing all the time, so Casetify is a necessity for me. I can't recommend Casetify enough, and I feel so lucky to be able to work with brands that I just genuinely love and that I used before I ever even partnered with them. So yeah, if you're interested, um, you can go to casetify.com slash fern to see a collection of some of my favorite cases from them. Okay, so I'm just gonna get myself all situated here and then we'll crack into this. This is just from Michaels, by the way, if anyone's curious. Oh my gosh, it looks huge. <gasps> it's huge. Oh my gosh. For some reason, I thought it was gonna be like this big, but this is like a huge, what the heck? Okay, this is not gonna be a one, one evening project. <laughs> oh my gosh, whoa. This is so cool. Oh my gosh. New cozy hobby unlocked. Okay. So this is what it's supposed to look like. How cute. Oh my gosh. I'm suddenly feeling overwhelmed, you guys. Oh. Why is there two? This is like the guide or something? Oh my gosh. I'm such a nude. Oh my gosh, there's so many tips and tricks. Like, I need to freaking study this for a second. Good morning, everybody. Is it morning? Oh, it's 12 o'clock, literally exactly noon. I've just made myself a cup, a cup of calm tea. Uh, it's lavender and mint and it's very delicious. So I'm excited to drink that. The snow is kind of anticlimactic. It, there's barely any and it's just melting now. We're kind of back into rain mode weather, but I did check the forecast and there is more snow to come and it's supposed to get really cold. So the next week or so should be 
interesting weather but um i wanted to give you an update on what my paint by number is looking like how this is coming along it's not very impressive you guys oh my gosh so this is what i completed last night this little corner which i don't even think it's completed i'm gonna need to go over this because this light color just like didn't cover super well and also this just looks shite like i just did not do a very good job um but this okay look how small that corner is in like the scheme of everything this thing is massive but that's what i finished and that took me a full hour you guys a freaking hour i was doing this until 10 p.m last night so yeah that's just like insane this thing's gonna take me like 20 hours or something so yeah, crazy. But I will say really mindful, like nice relaxing activity that you can just kind of get consumed by. So I really enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to working on it again. I don't know when I'm gonna get a chance because I have a really, oops, oh my gosh, my camera. I have a lot of work stuff going on, like videos that I'm currently working on and sponsorships and things like that. And then I also have a busy weekend. My friend Hillary is having a baby and the gender reveal is this weekend. So my friend Shannon is coming over from Vancouver on Friday and um, she's gonna, she's making the cake for it. So she's gonna finish the cake at my house and do the icing and everything. Um, so she's coming here on Friday and then on Saturday we have the gender reveal, which is like a couple towns over, I think. I have to, I have to double check where it is, but I think it's like uh, maybe... 30 minute 35 minute drive from me so we're gonna be out there doing that on saturday and then on sunday we are going my boyfriend and i are going to victoria because we got tickets for cirque du soleil which is so freaking cool i've always wanted to go to cirque du soleil but i've never i've never been before so I'm really, really excited for that. We just bought the tickets last month. Um, I think the last time we were in Victoria, yeah, we saw a like billboard and advertisement for it. And I was like, oh my gosh, Cirque du Soleil is coming to Victoria. That's so cool. So we bought tickets and that's kind of our like fun date thing that we're doing in January. So yeah, I'm really excited for that. I think we're going to make a nice little day trip out of it, um, even though I'm in saving money mode. So probably i don't know trying to trying to do things on a budget for for a while here so yeah there's just a lot going on this week and i'm probably going to start a new weekly vlog tomorrow so i'll be able to take y'all along for some of this stuff which will be fun um other than that what else did i want to update you on I'm just getting ready to film a bunch today, so I need to clean up the paint by number and everything. I don't even know where I'm gonna put this while I'm like while it's incomplete. I'm gonna have to find somewhere to pop it. But um yeah, feeling good today. The sun keeps peeking out just a little bit, which is really nice. But um yeah. Oh yeah, I've also been meaning to tell y'all about the movies that I've seen lately because I've seen in the past like week or week and a half. Watch out, baby. She doesn't like moving for me. Watch out, can your mommy sit here? Thank you, thank you. All is over at the other end. Can you see her head? She's all cozy, oh. <laughs> Anyways, I saw, um, I went with my mom the weekend before last and saw the new Godzilla movie and it was so good. You guys, I was so, I was so surprised at how good it was. I was not expecting it to be so emotional. I was crying. My mom's a big Godzilla fan, so she really wanted to see it. And I was kind of like, sure, whatever, I'll go with you. I, I don't know anything about Godzilla or I didn't. I'd never seen any Godzilla movie before. I was like, not really my thing, but this new one, highly recommend. I think I liked it because it was less of like, an action like Godzilla horror kind of thing and more of a focus on the like emotional aspect of the human characters and their relationships and their like struggles with love and loss and yeah it was a really it was a really tender movie honestly so definitely recommend watching Godzilla minus one I think that's what it's called and then the second movie, which, oh my goodness, you guys, I was unwell. Like, I was unwell. Like, sobbing in the movie theater, unwell. Um, so definitely bring in some freaking tissues if you go to this one. But <clears throat> on this past weekend, we saw The Iron Claw, which is a wrestling movie. And don't get put off by that if you're not a wrestling fan, because I'm definitely not a wrestling, wrestling fan. 
but just the story of this family and all these tragic things that happened to them oh my goodness you guys oh my goodness just go see it it was so good i was shook by zach efron's performance in that movie like yeah wow it was amazing so yeah, I just wanted to share those two movie recs with you before I forget because like I said, there's been so many things lately that I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to tell them this and then I just, I end up forgetting. But um, oh yeah, and I've also been saving a package to open with you. Maybe we'll do that later. It's a kitchen appliance. So it's not like the most exciting thing in the world, but I'm excited about it. I love kitchen stuff. And I've also started a new meal planning service because Rainbow Plant Life just launched her meal meal planning i don't know what to call it because it's not an app in the past i've always used apps but this is just like you get it by email in a pdf form every week anyways rainbow plant life is my favorite like recipe creator i love her videos i have one of her cookbooks and yeah i just love literally every recipe she puts out so what i've been waiting since she announced it in like october for her to launch this meal planning service thing in january and she finally did so yeah, I've been using that. And I'm trying to just level up my like food prep, meal prep kind of game just to make things easier and quicker um, because I end up spending a lot of time cooking and meal prepping and everything. But anyways, we will unbox that later on because I have to get cracking with um, filming my videos that I'm working on today before I lose light because the sun likes to set early still. <laughs> Okay, you guys, good morning. It is now Wednesday. I didn't hop back on here again yesterday because I was literally just filming and editing all afternoon and evening. I was editing until 11 p.m. last night. So yeah, it's just been, I've just been on in work mode and I'm kind of neglecting everything else. Like I've been needing to get groceries all week and I have not done it. <laughs> it's Wednesday now. Um, don't know when that's gonna happen because I'm busy all day today and maybe I'll do it tomorrow. I don't know. Anyways, long story short, I've been busy and I didn't get a chance to really check in again yesterday. So here we are on Wednesday. Hi, hello. I had to hop on here and chat with you because I am having a fangirl moment. So I've been trying to be better with responding to my Instagram DMs and comments. So I've been taking a little bit time, a little bit of time each morning to to dedicate to that. So I was like answering comments on my reel that I posted yesterday. And then I was going through my DMs and um, I saw a message in my request folder and I clicked on it. And I'm so shook because the founder of Mooncat, if y'all know, my favorite nail polish brand, like one of my favorite just brands ever, I'm obsessed with them. If you watch this channel, you know Mooncat. You've seen it before. I've, yeah, I'm always painting my nails with Mooncat um, and like getting their polishes and stuff. I have no affiliation with the brand. Like I've always bought everything with my own money. Like they don't know who I am, whatever. Um, but then I saw this message from the founder of Mooncat and she's a freaking plant girly, you guys. She is a plant girly. Like she has a plant account. I have never been so shook. Well, I probably have, but... <laughs> It just feels so full circle. Like she follows me. She follows me. She's a plant curly. That is just so cool. What the heck? I just, oh my gosh. I love that so much. That is just so cool. And my mind is blown because I, okay, whoops, my battery died, but yeah, what the heck? That is just so, so freaking cool. I love that. And I don't know how I didn't know that. Like, hello, but anyways, Speaking of Mooncat, I actually need to redo my nails. Like they are past overdue. This has been on for like 10 days, I think, this polish. I did this, wait, literally I did this polish on New Year's Eve. And it is now, <laughs> I come to look at my December 2023 calendar. That's not gonna help me. It is now the 10th today. So yeah, this has been on for like 11 days, which is crazy. So it needs to go, but I'm really impressed with how well this has stayed on and I haven't touched it up or anything at all. They recommend to touch up, like redo the top coat every few days to really make it last. But I'm really bad at doing that. Like I usually don't touch it up. I usually just redo them every week. This is House of Hades, this blue, which I'm obsessed with. And it's probably stayed on. Like this is some of the best staying power out of their polishes that I've tried so far. Like it has not peeled or chipped or anything yet. Um, but I do need to redo it. And my nails are also just getting like a little long. They need to be filed. But anyways, um, since I'm on here, maybe I will do the unboxing that I was wanting to do. So I'm gonna have a little bit of a food chat right now. I think I already mentioned that 
I am doing the Rainbow Plant Life meal plan now. Um, let me see if I have one of her cookbooks here to show you. I can't reach it. It's way up in the cupboard. I'll try to link Rainbow Plant Life down below if you're looking for recipe videos. Um, a lot of her stuff is more like, I don't wanna say gourmet, but it, it like, it's just a little bit fancier than maybe a lot of people would, would want to um, commit to, but the meal plan, she does have a lot of videos as well that are like quick things or like, yeah, meal prep for the week and like weeknight meals. And if you look for those videos, she does have a lot of videos like that, but she also has a lot of videos on how to make just like immaculate dishes. Um, she's an amazing, amazing freaking cook or chef or recipe person, whatever. Anyway, so the way that the meal plan works is you get the meals that you're going to be making during the week. She does three main meals. And for us, it's like a four servings thing. So for us, that makes three dinners, three lunches. And then she also does a side salad every week to go with those. Um, so you're gonna be cooking three meals and a salad. And she does it so that like you get the meals and the breakdown of that and everything. And then you get the grocery list, everything that you need to shop for. And then obviously like the instructions and everything to cook the meals and also just extra information like tips and tricks, storage stuff. Um, if you're like really short on time one day, there's like an emergency meal section that you can make. A big part of making this work and of like making just meal planning and cooking in general work for me at least is the meal prep section. So what works best for me is to get groceries on Friday or Saturday, I'd prefer to get them on Friday than I have Saturday and Sunday to, the, to do the prep on either of those days, but to get the groceries one day and then to do the prep on another day. And it usually takes a couple of hours, but then it makes your weeknight cooking just so much quicker and more streamlined. So I'm trying to find ways to just make my prep faster and easier. And um, something that I've been using a lot more is my food processor, but I just have like a little dinky, I just have this little dinky mini one. Like, it's so small, I can hardly fit anything in here and it also leaks. And I've had that for years and I've just been using it even though it's such an annoyance. So for Boxing Day, I saw that there was a big, I think KitchenAid one on sale. So we were like, okay, let's get it. Like it's gonna make meal prep easier and everything. So that's what came in the mail. I have never had like a full-sized food processor before. I'm so excited. I don't think I've ever had anything from KitchenAid before, actually. I really don't think so. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Okay, I don't know how I'm gonna get this box out. Oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. Here she is. I am going to be able to fit so much in here. This is all of the things that it comes with. Shredding, slicing, dicing, a lid, multi-purpose, just like the blade and dough. I mean, I don't do a lot of baking, but you never know. It's huge, you guys. <laughs> Holy crap, where are we gonna put this thing? That's the problem with kitchen appliances. It's like, where do you put them? However, the nice thing about this one, and I looked at the reviews before buying, obviously, um, and a lot of people said that it's nice that all the like um, attachments just store inside of here. Oh, here we go. Here's the reveal. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. Oh my gosh, yeah, all the parts are in here. This is so cool. I've never had like an actual food processor before. I've only had the mini one. And the mini one is great for like mincing garlic, which is something that I do a lot instead of, you know, it's so annoying to mince garlic for every single recipe. So if you just do your prep at the beginning of the week, you can like, sometimes we'll just throw like 20 garlic cloves in. It minces them in like 10 seconds and then you just store them in the fridge and you can use it throughout the week and it's so much easier. So just stuff like that. Um, the mini one is fine for that, but for doing anything larger than something like that, um, it just wasn't cutting it. So, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to have this. Super, super nice. Okay, I'll need to like watch a video on how to use this because I have no idea, but, and I don't think I'll take it, I don't think I'll take everything out right now. Probably just put this away because 
I don't need it right now, but yay, my new food processor. I'm so excited. Also, this is a cookbook, since we're on the topic of food. Um, this is a cookbook that my mom got, from, got me for Christmas. It's one of the Oh She Glows cookbooks, the for dinner version, and it looks so good. I flipped through this already and kind of like bookmarked things that I want to make. And I've already made a soup from in here, which was delicious and just like a super easy soup um, that is kind of, has a lot of things that you just, I like bookmarking recipes of things that I usually have on hand, like kind of like a pantry meal, um, just for when, for when I haven't gotten groceries in like a week, like this week, and I can just throw together something. So that's what I did. Like there's this um, pantry doll that I bookmarked and the soup that I made. Oh my gosh, yeah, these look so good. These buffalo cauliflower tacos, like, are you kidding me? I will need to be making those immediately because that looks delicious. Um, anyways. Oh, here. Cold Be Gone Flavor Bomb Noodle Soup. So it's just this hearty veggie noodle soup. It was so delicious. And I added chickpeas to it too. And yeah, it was just, it was so good. It had a little bit, bit of a kick from the spices. And yeah, delicious. So that's the one thing I've made from here so far. And it was lovely so i'm really looking forward to um making some more of these recipes anyways that's my little wednesday morning food chat um i'm probably gonna hop on here later today and talk about books because i'm currently reading bunny by mona awad which is kind of a big deal because i've been wanting to read it for so long and i have two other Mona Awad books as well and I've just been so excited for her writing and to read her books and I'm officially reading the first one so it's been a very strange time um but and I also wanted to talk to y'all about my favorite books that I read last year and I was mentioning in my last book video that I posted I was gonna make a whole video about that but I decided against it so I'm probably just gonna briefly talk about them in this vlog um so yeah the rest of this vlog or maybe not the rest of this vlog but the next clip you see I'm hoping to just sit down and have a little a little book chat. Anyways, gotta go. I have more filming to do today, more editing to do today. And um, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much all I, all I will be up to um, until I see you next time. Okay, update. The Mooncat founder, Michelle, sent me a photo of her trailing plants and said that it was inspired by my plant wall and that she watches my videos sometimes. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It is still Wednesday but it's almost 11 p.m. I just finished editing another video and then I had to have a shower because my hair needed to be washed and I didn't want to have to wash it tomorrow because then I would have to blow dry it and I just never really liked the way it looks after it's just been washed. Anyways, I had to have a shower and wash my hair so I did that and now before I go to bed, I have to do my nails. <laughs> I just have to do them because it's really peeling now. Like today was the 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 day that they really started to crumble. Um, and since my nails are so long right now, they'll break if if it's all peeling off like this. Like when they're painted, it really it like strengthens them. It like adds like a brace almost <laughs> having the layers of nail polish on. So my nails don't really break when they're painted. But once it starts chipping, um, this one actually already did break a little. But I cut it earlier. Anyways, um, I have my little station set up here to do my nails. I'm going to watch a video and try to just relax because yeah, I feel like it'll just be good for me to just chill for a little bit anyways. I'm doing a new color, so that's exciting. This is Mercury's Tears by Mooncat and it's a really pretty purpley color. I thought that this would be a good like frosty january color oh my gosh oh it's ridiculously pretty y'all will have to see it tomorrow in the daylight but wow it is so so gorgeous so i'm gonna do that and um yeah <laughs> just checking in i said i was gonna be talking about books next time I came on but I'm pushing that to tomorrow because I just finished up with everything so late so yeah I will talk to you guys tomorrow 
Hello everybody, happy Thursday. I did not expect for this vlog to be going this many days, but I just feel like it's been so busy that I've only been able to add like little snippets of each day. So yeah, we're just rolling with it. And maybe tomorrow on Friday, I'll start the new weekly vlog <laughs> or maybe, I don't know. I don't even know what's going on right now. Um, there's just a lot, but I think that today is my last like really busy work day um, of the week which is great because today's Thursday and um, tomorrow's Friday and I'm busy doing with other obligations. But anyways, it is beautiful and sunny. It's actually really cold out. It was snowing a little bit earlier, but since it's sunny, the house is nice and warm. Literally the sun like saves this home on the cold days. If the sun is out, it, it is warm in here, like no matter how cold it is outside. So that's really great and really useful. But um, anyways, I wanted to pop in. I'm just working right now. I have all of my stuff set up um, at the kitchen island here. Sometimes I work in this spot during the day, especially when I'm doing like video planning and stuff like that. Um, but of course I have to show you what my nails turned out like. Oh my gosh, let me give you a better look. They're so pretty. Okay, so this is Mercury's Tears. And yeah, it's a really nice like purpley with like a blue kind of sheen. I feel like this lighting isn't doing them justice. Let me show you. Now that's too bright. Anyways, they're beautiful. And I went with a more like um, flat. Like I kind of filed them down to be a little bit more flat. I usually have my nails a little bit more pointy, but every once in a while I file them so that they're more flat and I kind of, I kind of dig it. I really like how this shape looks. Anyways, um, I was up until like midnight last night working on my nails, um, but I'm glad that I stayed up and got that done and out of the way and also just had some time to kind of relax last night. I'm working on a video that I think it's gonna take me all day to finish it. I already have a bunch of filming done for it, but I need to finish it up today and I need to film the sponsored portion and then edit it. So I'm gonna be working on this like all day. Anyways, I'm gonna go back to my work. Okay, friends of the vlog, I am back and I am going to be wrapping up this, oh, this lighting is not good, what the heck? I am going to be wrapping up, oh my gosh, is this where I started the vlog as well and this is going to be where I end it? Um, yes, we are wrapping up the vlog with some book chats, like I was saying, at some point, <laughs> I can't even keep track of when, what videos or what point of videos I say things anymore. But I was saying that I wanted to talk a little bit about my favorite books that I read in 2023. Since we're already halfway through January, I don't want to make a whole video just about that. I, I just am going to add it into this vlog. So if you're not interested in hearing about that, and I'm also gonna do a little reading update to talk about what I'm reading right now. But if you're not interested in hearing me ramble on about books for the end of this vlog, then thank you so much for watching. I will not be offended if you click out. So I tried to narrow my favorite books down to five of them, but I think I have six. It was so hard to choose like the fifth one. Like my top four was really easy, but then trying to pick out the next one, like the fifth one was just really hard for some reason. But um, anyways, I do have a stack of some of my absolute favorites right here. Look at these bad boys. Oh my goodness, love all of these books so, so much. Um, but maybe before I talk about those, I'm all over the place. I, I apologize. Um, but maybe before I talk about those, I'll talk about the book that I'm reading right now. It should be brief because I don't have too much to say about this because I literally have no idea what I'm reading, no idea what's going on. This is so, so bizarre. So my current read is Bunny by Mona Awad. And I've talked a lot about how I'm really keen to read all of Mona Awad's books. This is my first read from her, Bunny. Um, but I also have uh, Rouge. I don't know if you can see down here, but I have Rouge, which is, I believe, her newest release from last year. And then I also have All's Well, which is um, another one of her books, I think from a couple, or is that the newest one? No, no, no. I think All's Well is from a couple of years ago. 
and I've heard such great things about that one so I can't wait I've heard great great things about both of these by the way and I've heard mixed reviews on bunny but I started off reading bunny because this is actually um, well I wanted to start off with it anyways since it's the earliest one of the three but um, uh, this is actually my like discord book club pick for the month of january we have just like a very kind of casual book club on there that we do and we vote every month on what we're gonna read and january it, it is bunny so i am actually 90 percent through this it says 31 minutes to go but that includes the acknowledgements or like you know whatever is whatever stuff is at the end of books so realistically i probably only have about five to eight percent of this book left and when i tell you that i am so just confused i i have no idea what's going on i don't even i don't even have like theories as to what's going on and i kind of this is just this is definitely the strangest book i've ever read i would say and you know i like strange and piranesi which is one of my all-time favorite books is also very strange but then it like it comes together and it kind of turns into more of like a mystery that you can kind of try to figure out but this i just feel like it's not gonna come together i don't know i feel like i'm still gonna be very confused when it ends we'll see but me being over 90 percent through and just having no idea it's so so bizarre you guys i mean the writing like i'm i'm so impressed i mean first of all is mona awad okay that's my first question because what the actual heck if y'all have read this then you know it is just so strange like i'm like what i don't even know what is reality what isn't this is like an unhinged dark academia where our main character gets involved with this cult of these super weird clicky girls that call each other bunnies it's very kind of like psychedelic horror it kind of gives me the vibe of like midsummer or just something that's just like just very strange there's a lot of scenes that are almost just like weird dream sequences yeah you don't know what's reality you don't know what's um isn't and yeah it's just it's weird <laughs> so i have no idea what my thoughts are no idea what i'm gonna rate this i'm really curious to finish it and i'm hoping i'll be able to finish it tonight i've actually been so behind on my reading you guys i shouldn't say behind because it's not it's not something that i want to be putting a lot of pressure on myself to do and i've been thinking about this because i set my goodreads reading goal for this year to 50 books and last year it was 40 and i ended up reading 44 books and I, I did not find that difficult at all. Like I definitely went through like periods where I wasn't reading as much and it's just, that was just how many I read. I wasn't really like forcing myself to read more to reach that goal or anything. So I was gonna put this 2024 at 40 books again, but then I was like, you know what? I feel like I can do 50. So I set it to 50, but um, I kind of feel like I might lower it. I don't know. It doesn't really matter, but I just don't want to feel like pressured to have to read because I really want to enjoy the books that I read this year and I really want to be able to like think about them and um, you know, like annotate them and tab them and stuff because just interacting with my books like that um, is really like fulfilling and it makes me appreciate them more. So um, yeah, I want to take my time with things. So I'm not being hard on myself for taking so long to get through books. But I will say that I haven't been reading a lot just because I've been busy and trying to get on top of um, like my work and get ahead of things, which I'm actually doing really good at. Spoiler alert. I mean, not really a spoiler, but it is kind of shocking. I will say breaking news. Fern is ahead on filming, except for for the vlog channel. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm behind. I know I said this vlog was going to come out on the 14th. We're already past the 14th and I'm still sitting here filming for it. So let's not talk about that. But in general, I feel like I'm getting really organized. Um, but unfortunately, things like reading has not been at the forefront. Um, yeah, in like the past 10 days, I probably have only read for five of them, like for a little bit at night. Um, anyways, things should slow down soon once I just feel like I'm ahead enough to kind of take a breather. Because that's the point of trying to get ahead on my work is so that I don't feel so stressed and like I, I have more time to kind of spend doing the things that I like to do but anyways so I'm reading bunny right now that's my update on that and um now I'm gonna talk about my favorite books that I read last year and I guess we're gonna start with this one the only one left by Riley Sager and I'm just gonna kind of talk about this one briefly because I did talk about this a lot 
in the book video that I posted before this vlog. So this is a thriller and I love the kind of like gothic setting of this. It takes place in this big old spooky mansion, which is at like the top of a cliff. There's waves crashing down below. It's just, the vibes are immaculate. So we follow our main character, Kit, who works as a care aide, and she's assigned to a patient that lives in this house, an old woman who lives in this house by herself. Well, there's like staff that work there, but she is secluded to living this in this house. She's been kind of like banished from society. And the reason is because she was accused of murdering her whole family when she was a teenager. And she was never convicted of it because there wasn't enough evidence. But since all that happened years ago, she's just been, you know, like living in this house. So Kit goes and works there and takes care of her. And the lady, her name is Lenora, she decides that she wants to tell Kit, she wants to confide in her about the truth of what happened that night, the night of the murders. The thing is that she can't move, she's nonverbal, and the only way that she can communicate is through a typewriter. So you're like getting the story like via her telling it to the typewriter, but then you're also just like all this crazy stuff is happening to the main character and it's just such a wild ride, you guys. Oh my goodness, there's so many plot twists at the end. I was just like, what the heck is going on? I read this in two days, my favorite thriller that I read last year. Can't wait for Riley Sager's new book that comes out in June. I will be purchasing that one as well. Okay, next on my list is Wayward. This is a book of the month pick, which is very fun. And this is actually another one of my Discord um, book club picks. This was for like one of the summer months, I think, maybe August. I thought that the writing was so, so beautiful in this book. I cannot believe that this is a debut novel. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that this is Amelia Hart's first um, book. But oh my goodness, yeah, I loved the writing. It was very just transportive. Like I could feel, I could just envision everything perfectly. If you like witchy stories, if you like nature, which I'm sure a lot of us do because I'm sure that a lot of y'all are also plant people. If you like those things, then I think that there is a good chance you would really enjoy this book. However, I have to say that there are major trigger warnings for this book. I know a lot of people found it really hard to read. Um, so just make sure that you look up what those are before you read this if that's something that you're worried about but i thought that this is just such a beautiful story it follows three women who are related but they're like from different generations of their family so so each point of view is from a different point in time so there's one that takes place i think is it in the 1800s Oh, 1600s. Okay, so yeah, it follows one woman in the year 1619 who is awaiting trial for the murder of somebody and she's been accused of being a witch and practicing witchcraft and killing this man. The second point of view that we get is from Violet. I think she was my favorite one, but it follows her in the year 1942 and she's a teenager. I think she's 15 or 16 and she is stuck at home with this very strict and kind of unloving father. Her mother has passed away and she's just like facing all these kind of they like um, questions of who she is, like what really happened to her mother because there's different rumors. And she notices that she has this really strong, like she can tell that she's different. She has this really strong um, connection to nature. And um, that's kind of how their magic is with these women. Like they can, they influence nature and can kind of control that. Anyways, Violet goes through some really, really horrendous things and we kind of follow her journey and, and, and follow her like even as she gets older towards the end of the book. And then it follows a modern point of view from Kate um, in 2019, who is fleeing an abusive relationship and kind of realizing this magic that's within her and reconnecting with her like ancestry, I guess, and just kind of regaining her power and discovering who she is. Anyways, sorry, this is getting long, but it's such a good book. And honestly, like all three point of views were just great. And I feel like sometimes when I'm reading a book with multiple POVs, sometimes some of them are just like boring and you're like, ugh, like I don't wanna hear from this person now. But all three of their stories were just so good. Okay, next, Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner. I can't believe that I read this in 2023 because it feels like I read this so, so long ago. This is a memoir and it is so incredibly heartbreaking. I've talked about this before. I literally was like full on sobbing. Like even thinking about it, I get a little bit emotional because it was just so, oh my goodness, just how raw this book is. Like the things that she says in this book, I, I feel like I got her like innermost thoughts sometimes. Like sometimes she would say something and I was kind of like, whoa, like I can't believe that she just shared that, but in a, in a good way. This book is so layered. It covers so many different things, but 
it's all kind of centered around the loss of her mother and it really documents like what it was like leading up to that and like becoming the caregiver for her mother and then once she lost her what what it was like after and just like oh my goodness it's so it's so grief filled but so beautiful and um one of the reviews that i saw for this book on goodreads that really stuck with me was somebody saying that this book changed their life more than any self-help book ever has because it really just like changes your perspective on how you i don't know like how you how you see your loved ones how you spend your time like just how you live your life essentially because it's just so yeah, I don't know. You just, you need to read it or listen. I recommend listening to this, honestly, because I listened to it and it's narrated by the author and it's just so, so good. This is Zahner's searingly candid coming of age story, a growing apart from and then back together with her Korean identity and of forging her own path in the wake of a devastating loss. Oh, it's just so phenomenal. Honestly, probably my favorite memoir that I've read up until now. I haven't read that many, but <laughs> this is my number one. Okay, next we have Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I think that I read a few Taylor Jenkins Reid last year. Yeah, I read Daisy Jones and the Six, this one, and Malibu Rising. And this is by far my favorite out of those three. This was so, so good. I honestly want to reread this and annotate it because there was just so many lines that I was like, oh my goodness. So this follows Carrie Soto, who is a pro tennis player. She's actually retired <coughs> when the novel starts. And then she goes back into her tennis career because somebody is challenging her one of the titles that she owns and she doesn't want to lose that. So then she goes back. And believe me, I thought a book about tennis would be a snooze fest, but obviously I had to read it because it's by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Anyways. Um, I have never been so invested in tennis in my life. Like I was on the edge of my freaking seat. Um, so even if you don't like tennis, like even if you don't care about sports like me, the story in this was just so good. The relationship with her father, oh my goodness. I'm just like, I was crying my eyes out, you guys. Her father is her coach. So it goes through, it, it like follows their relationship from when she was a very young girl into her adulthood. And it just, she's a very like cold and kind of unlikable character. Like she's a very morally gray character for sure. Um, which I love morally gray characters, but you really get to understand like why she is the way that she is. And yeah, her dynamics with her family and just, um, yeah, just, just what has shaped her throughout her life. And it was just so good. So yeah, I just, I really, really love this book. And then last but not least, if you have been on my vlog channel anytime as of late, or I guess as of the past couple of months, you may have heard me talk about Piranesi because this is a pretty recent read for me. I think I read this in maybe November, but oh my goodness, it's instantly in my top three favorite books of all time. Actually, I'll show you my top three. So Piranesi, The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller and Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. These are my faves. So I feel like that gives like a pretty good, um, it's like a pretty good range, honestly, because all these books are pretty different, but they're all just so, so beautiful in their own way. Oh my goodness. I need to reread Where the Crawdads Sing and the Song of Achilles. This book is just so, it's kind of hard to describe and I really can't say too much because I feel like you really just need to go into this without without really knowing a lot. Like I would, I do not want to spoil anything, but it follows our main character, Piranesi, who lives in this giant labyrinth of a house. Like it's kind of like a big like castle. There's like never ending corridors and floors and it's full, full of marble statues. And to make things even more bizarre, there's also the ocean inside this house. And then there's also another character called the other and they are working together to solve some like great mystery. They're gonna unlock some knowledge that's going to like change their lives. It's soft fantasy, it's a mystery. And it's one of those just like heartbreakingly beautiful books. I was like crying my eyes out at the end. Piranesi is one of my all time favorite characters because he's just has this like sheer innocence and goodness about him. I feel like I learned so much from him as a character and from this book in general, it really just, it's one that I went down the Reddit rabbit holes after um, because it's just so, there's still things that I like think about in this book. So bizarre, but so incredibly beautiful. So I think that that's, oh yeah, I also put Severance in my top books. I did, but I do not have a physical copy of that one. I'm looking at my little um, 
photo that I took of my what my favorite books are from last year. I can't believe I read Severance last year either. That must have been one of my first reads of 2023 because it was feels so long ago that I read it. But Severance is one that I highly, highly recommend as well. I actually really need to get a physical copy of that book because I want to have it so that I can reread it and annotate it because there are still things from that book that live in my brain that I think about because it's just another one that's so... It's just... Again, it's a kind of weird one. It covers so many just like current issues. So Severance follows a woman who is living during the like apocalypse essentially. It's like a zombie apocalypse, which sounds ridiculous, but it's not like an LOL kind of zombie apocalypse. It's like some like disease is coming and basically turning people into zombies and killing everyone. So she is, I believe living in New York City and she's one of the very few people that are left and she's just kind of like living her life through this like crazy like end of times situation that's happening. She ends up linking up with this other group of people and there's like there's kind of like two storylines because you first learn a lot about like her and and growing up and just all of these things that she's kind of been faced with in her life and then you're also like in the present where she's at the end of the world. It's very like and the storyline, the storyline is one thing, but all of the symbolism in the book and all of the themes are just like, if you are an existential millennial, if you feel like you are just like a pawn in the game of life, if you feel like you're just like in the rat race, read this book. It is just so, it's just so representative of the times. And I loved it. I think I rated that one 4.5 out of 5 rather than 5 just because the first third of the book I remember being so slow and I was kind of bored but um, if you can push through, like if you're bored at the beginning just push through and yeah I think that the rest of the book just really makes up for it. Anyways, that's it. That's all of my favorite books that I read last year. Oh my goodness, so many incredible books and I'm so excited for this year because I'm of course going to read even more books and discover more incredible stories and um, read more beautiful writing. So I'm just, I'm so excited for that. And of course I will keep y'all updated during the weekly vlogs and also maybe throw in a few just bookish videos as well with maybe like updates or I don't know. Let me know if you want to see any just like book theme videos from me and what you would want those to be. Because obviously I love just sitting here and talking to y'all about books. Anyways, I think that this is going to be the end. Oh, look at this bookmark that I got the other day. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. It's a little cow. And look, she has a little flower in her mouth. So the head pokes out the top and then there's a tail down here. It's literally so cute. I thought this would be perfect for like quirkier reads, you know? This is what it looks like in the book. It's attached by this little string, but yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with that. I put it in the Collected Regrets of Clover because I thought that it kind of suited, I don't know. Also love this book. This is like one of my, not like my top, top favorite reads, but one that I really, really loved that I read last year. Anyways. Um, yeah, this is gonna be the end of this vlog. I'm actually about halfway through editing this, so um, hopefully it will be up for y'all shortly. Hope that y'all are having a lovely week. Thank you so much for watching. I'm getting back on track with the vlog, so thank you for your patience with this little um, hiatus that I went on, unplanned hiatus. Um, anyways, yes, I will see y'all in the next one. Okay, bye.